Hello, hello, hello. Happy Sunday. I know I told you guys I was all taking the day off. And I did. I did Netflix and chill like half of the day. <laughs> Which I rarely ever do. Um, and then I decided to come back and do a little painting. Oh, hi hubby. I'm on live. And he's sneaking back out. He's watching football. It's football time. And so... I pushed myself today and did some tonal things and some crazy dark things, and I really didn't like it, but I'll show you. I did a really Halloween-y, halloween, -y, halloween -y dark painting, and I was pushing some boundaries and playing with some different things, and I didn't love it. So, having done that, get this out of the way, I kind of felt pretty bummed. And I thought, you know, that's not me. Sometimes you paint things and they're not you. And you try new things and it's like, oh, that looks really kind of crazy, but I'll try it. And then you're like, oh, hmm, no. So, having done that. I decided I needed to paint something a little more cheerful on a Sunday while he's watching football. So I know I didn't announce it, but I thought I would pop on and share it with you. If you guys need a little pick me up, a little fun and easy project for the evening, um, get you going, um, join along. I'm going to turn you down and hopefully I will be able to catch comments as well. See, this always looks so shaded in the I don't know it's my phone it dims down for the light so hopefully you can see good so I thought we would do some flowers tonight something a little more cheery and I was thinking asters because that's like blooming in my garden right now I don't know where you guys are from but I'm just taking some blue and white on a chip brush to do a nice background I want to start lightest at the top and get a little bit darker as I go down. My brushes are really wet because I used them for the other painting so we'll see how that works out for us. So far so good. I am just using plain acrylic paint tonight. Um, I may use my chalk paint for the purple for the asters but we'll see. You could also make your own purple um, with red and blue. And because I might want to have some mix, some mixed shades, um, we may go there. So as I come down here further, I'm just going to add more blue and get darker as I go to the bottom. I've got some black on here from before. I'm going to put a little black in my blue down in here. Um, Basically, you're just getting a variation in your colors. If you get too dark or too much black, go ahead and add some blue to it. Lighten it up. It's fine. I just, one of the things when I do my backgrounds is I like to have some interest in them. If you don't have your complete page covered with a whole landscape scene, or I don't know. You can see I'm getting some different shades in there from paints that are on my palette. It, it can get kind of boring and flat, so I like to have that variation. Hi, baby. I thought you were watching football. <laughs> so, my hubby's peeking in on us. Somebody else is too, but I'm not sure. It doesn't tell me who it is. So, quick and easy background. If you get too dark, add some white. If you get too light, add some black. I mean, pretty. But I just like to have, I think I'm in a dark mood today because all my paintings are coming out really, really quite dark. A little crazy, huh? How fast and easy was that, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, normally for you guys, I would draw in chalk, but um, because my paint is wet, I didn't do my background ahead. I'm gonna just go ahead and draw 
with a little bitty paintbrush. Just to give me an outline. Get into that old black I got on there. We'll do a little simple base. Just I'm going really light because then if I want to change anything, it's not chalk, I can't just erase it. Um, so if you're feeling uncomfortable with that, then definitely take a blow dryer or take a break and let your painting dry so you can draw on it with some chalk. But very easy. Um, asters, as you know, have a ton, ton of leaves. And if you don't know, <laughs> they have a ton of leaves. So just going to give myself a guide. Most of this is going to get covered up anyways, so we won't get too excited about it. Pretty easy. Since this is wet and I want my flowers to come out nice, I'm going to go ahead and do my leaves first because I don't care if there's a little blue or black in them. This is just kind of a quick and easy, I've got half an hour or whatever you've got kind of thing um, to just get a little time in, a little paint therapy time in, right? So I'm going to take my blue. You guys on here? Oh, you're not on here. Dude. Where are you? There you go. And some green. And make just a little blue-green color. Mix your blues and greens until you get a, a leaf shade that you like. If you're more towards the green side of life, you can add a little white if, you, if it's too dark, or a little black if it's too light. I like to add blue to mine to kind of get a tealy green. And more on the blue-green. I don't want to get too carried away with it because I have a blue background and I may have to add some white. You may have to add some white to lighten that up. Let me just go ahead and do that right now. Here we go. So the asters have long leaves with a stripe in the middle of them and they're very leafy. So, honestly, if you just take an angle brush and do, almost reminds me of pineapple as far as the shape of the, of the leaves. We can go back and put some um, line work into these when we get, when we get done. But pretty much with Aster, the more foliage, the better. And if you don't know what that flower is, definitely just, just Google it. You'll see what I'm talking about. And they actually have a darker, darker green than what I'm using. I'm going to add just a little bit of black to this. I know you guys can't see me mixing too well, but I just dabbed into my black. There you go. And if it's too dark, we can fix that later. Just kind of, we're just kind of getting a background. Like I always tell you guys, painting is all about layering. It's not um, one and done kind of thing. So you can see my shape. I'm just doing little, little lines, and you can do them long or short. They're they're actually all different shapes, so it's it's kind of a fun. Easy leaf to do. I'm going to add some more blue. I'm too, I don't know, too, too much of a green I don't like. I, I like more of a blue-green for myself, so. And if you get too much paint on your brush, just tap it off so you get back to your point. So what's everybody doing tonight? If you can hear my allergies, they're still killing me. You guys football fans, you guys watching the game, going to catch me on replay. If you come in on replay, type in and say replay so I know you were here.
I'm not a big football fan. I can watch it for a little bit, but I don't have any team. I don't, I didn't grow up watching sports, so it's not really, not really a thing for me. But I know a lot of people really enjoy it. Um, around here, there's a lot of Buffalo Bills fans. We're not too far from Buffalo, so um, apparently that's disappointing <laughs> today. But hey, you can't win them all, right? Give them some props for going out there and doing their thing. If you're a gardener and you grow aster, how is your aster growing this year? Let me know. So I don't know if you can see, I'm just picking up different colors, different shades of that green as I'm going. Um, and really getting a lot of leaves, a lot of leaves into this. And again, it's all about the layering because yes, you have a ton of leaves. So I'm going to add some more black to that tealy blue I've got going on. Just smidge more blue to it because now it's like gray. today. I'm just getting some different variations in the foliage. I'm going to show you this guys in a minute so you can see. And then we'll go on to the base um, while some more of this dries before we get into it. Asters are purple. Um, and they have yellow centers. So before we get into that I want to make sure the blue is the background is really dry because I don't want my centers to turn um, green. Yellow and blue make green, so yeah. I don't know if you can tell where I drew those stems. You can barely even see them anymore because, yeah, that's aster leaves. You really don't even see a stem, you just see leaves. Oh, hi Christy. Just uh, taking a few minutes here and painting some asters. September flower. Got a little dark on my background, so we'll see how that works out. I tried to do a watch party. Oh, I don't know how to do that either. But very cool if you figure it out, let me know. I haven't had that much experience with those. I, I see it recommends them on Facebook, but I don't know how to do those. <laughs> I'm just going to come back in with a little more touch of green. And I think since the flowers are purple and yellow, a yellow vase would be nice. Um, however, I am using my acrylics tonight and the yellow that I have in the acrylic is so thin and so very translucent. It really annoys me. Um, so I'm going to mix it with some white and see if it'll be thick enough to cover. We're pretty good here. I've got a little bit of wetness in this one little spot. Well, Jean is here. Well, Jean is here. Um, I don't know who that is. <laughs> okay. I don't think I'm reading it right, Christy. It says, well, Jean is here. If Jean knows how to do a watch party, watch it with her or him. <laughs> All right, that's good enough. Okay. So you guys, sometimes when I'm um, working on stuff and I want it to dry quick for the camera, I just roll the paper towel over it. It adds some, actually, if you're doing a canvas or something, it adds some really cool um, texture to things. But you're gonna wanna play with that a little bit and get comfortable with it before you do it on a piece you're going to like put on your wall or something like that. So I actually already have green in my white. I'm going to go over here away from there. I'm trying to keep the green out of my vase is my goal. And like I said, the yellow that I have is an acrylic and it's very thin. Um, you can see I got some green over here where I mixed blue. So I'm going to try to do this yellow and white together on the vase 
um, and hopefully it'll be thick enough to go over this blue. Um, we're going to find out together how well that works. If it's not, we'll do something else. See, uh, if it's not, it's going to take me a couple of layers. If I was using my chalk paint, um, which I love the sunshine yellow and the chalk paint, um, it wouldn't be so thin. But um, like I said, I just I wasn't really planning on painting today. I <laughs> I never plan on painting. I just ended up ended up here. My watch party is going. Whoa! Awesome. Thank you. You have to give me some tips on how to do that when I'm not painting and can pay attention and learn something. Oh, you know. But I don't know if you guys can tell. It's it's better. You can tell with the with the white into it. It's definitely better. But I just thought because the asters have a yellow center, um, it would be nice to have pull it out. You know, pull that color out because the purple's gonna asters are purple, so that's gonna take over. And as I'm painting my vase, I'm just, I'm going with the curve. I'm, I love the textured pieces, so these lines are going to show. So because the vase is curved, I'm curving to the right, I'm curving, curving to the left. I'll make it a little bit lighter in the center, if I can, if this yellow will cooperate, um, to give that vase some dimension. And we'll come back um, and do a little something something with it when we get to the end but if you can see I'm pretty heavy with that too and I will come back because as you can see this yellow is is see-through you can see that blue through it which the lines are nice and I'll still have the lines but I don't want that much see-through so we'll let that dry and come back to it I throw that right in the water. Okay, so for our pretty little asters, I don't know. I'm gonna try this itty bitty. We'll see how that goes. And again, I got this yellow. I wish I didn't. I should have got out my chalk paint, you guys, for this. All right, we're gonna roll with it. start with I'm gonna go back in and doing the yellow twice so because it's so thin but so to start with we'll just you guys see there yeah you can see do some little dots in a circle at the ends of these stems and we'll we can go in and put in more flowers I just want to have this is kind of just the guide um, a place to start so if you can tell I'm just I'm just dabbing Actually, in the um, asters, they're not dotted centers. They're, they're little itty-bitty lines. So I may come back in um, with another color and pull those out, but I'm just kind of giving myself a space to start with the purple flowers. And I did grab my chalk paint. I can't help myself for the purple. Should have grabbed it for the yellow. Um, I grabbed Raisin the Bar. Let's see, is this one angled? Yeah, yeah. itty bitty angled. Where are you? Itty bitty angled. This might be too small. We'll see. It's one fun thing when you're painting. You can just kind of play with things. Asters are great. They're just little... If you think of... Um, Daisy-like flowers, but do them in purple you're going to get an aster. And so I'm just drawing little lines out. Go a little shorter up in here. Maybe this one's turned a little bit. And then go do some longers. And I and I won't do these just one color, you guys. I'm going to come back and add some white to the purple too. Can you see that? Get my brush too wet. 
If your paint's dragging, you can add a little water. But they're so simple to do. If your brush is too fat, tap, just rub it off so it gets skinnier. And your first lay down is going to be your background of those asters. So don't get too excited about it. Just draw some lines. Keep getting too fat. It's all right though, because when I do the next layer, it'll be a little skinnier and it'll come to life. So what we want to do is have the background be the darkest. And then as we come forward in our painting, it'll get a little bit lighter. And in the center, it's going to get, we're going to do some lines out with those yellows and it's going to get a little bit darker. So you can see these bottom ones are all anchored to this heavy foliage, right? And um, you see asters, there's like a zillion flowers. So we're going to actually go up and do flowers above. You see how easy this is though? I mean, I'm just doing, doing little lines. Um, esters are very full flowers um, and I'm not going that full with my first, my first lay down because I'm going to do a couple of layers. So you can go as full or as sparse as you prefer. So there's that. We got that going. I'm just going to go ahead and add some more. Oops, I thought I had my little. I guess I don't. Okay. Um, some more centers in random spots. So at this point, I'm just doing some little lines with these yellows. I don't know how well you can see that yellow. I don't know if you can see it at all. You'll see it when I put the purple around it. I'm just making like little swishes or stars, I guess, with the yellow. Um, if you end up going in and putting purples where you don't have a yellow center, um, as it dries, you can go back in and put that in. But very simple. It was funny, I was thinking about asters the other day, and um, my sister-in-law actually messaged me, and she was trying to find a picture, I think she had done in high school, of asters. She wasn't able to find the picture, but she had fond memories of it, and that's, that's kind of the cool thing about painting. It just evokes emotions and memories, so um, whenever you get the chance, right? Let me see if you can see the yellow on there at all. Yeah, you can. See, I just randomly filled that in. So, I'm going to go back with that same dark purple that I did on the other ones and start filling this in. Now, I don't know, maybe in different parts of the country, asters grow nicer. Mine... They're pretty small flowers. They don't get, they're not huge like a daisy. Um, they're pretty small. So I'm not making them super big in my painting because that's not how we have them here. You can see I'm just going around and lightly, I'm using an angle brush and just pulling out streaks. Just doing lines all the way around. And right now I'm using my um, purple full strength. I haven't diluted it any. Um, like I said, this is the background. You want your background to be darkest. So quick and easy. So if you guys hop on, say hello, tell
Type replay if you catch me on replay. It means a lot to me to know that you are here. If you make any um, comments, I do come back and look at the videos if I missed it. I will try to reply to you if you have any questions. Um, so I do appreciate that. I do try to check on you. If for any reason you guys do leave a comment or have a question and I don't respond because somehow I missed it because <laughs> Facebook doesn't always show us all the things, feel free to send me a private message. I, I will get it eventually. Um, I check them every day. So I should respond within 24 hours, I would say. Um, and let me know that you have a question and, you know, just send me a message and I'll be happy to answer that and help you with anything. So I don't know if you can see this starting to come together and how I just call it my paint therapy. It's so fun and relaxing and after my earlier one. And now asters are a lot closer together than this, but I'm just doing my background. Um, as I start filling in, I may go in and add more flowers. Um, it's kind of a visual thing, what you like to see. Now, I know that there should be a lot more flowers in this. I'm already seeing that I'm definitely needing to add some more. And I'm going to go ahead and finish these up, and I may go in after, after I get off with you guys and add, add a bunch more, because I know you all don't want to hang out for hours and hours, so... Although I wish you would. We could we could paint for a couple of hours, I'm sure. <laughs> that would be easy enough. I'm not loving this little tiny angle brush. Let me see if I have a bigger one. That's a straight one. This one looks kind of ratty. We'll see how it works. So I'm just mixing some purple and white because I just want to get a lighter shade. Let's see if this is too ratty or if we can use it. And I'm bring this over here so you can see. I'm pushing my brush down so it gets flat. And I'm gonna go right back into those same flowers. Yeah, I do like this brush a little better. It's funny, um, as you use brushes, you kind of find what you prefer, what works for you. And if you can see, I'm not, where is it? I'm not coloring on right there. Um, I'm not coloring directly over every single stroke. I'm just kind of filling in some space. Again, randomly. Um, so some of that dark is still showing through behind there, and that's what I want. It's a little, I'm going to wet it down a little. It's a little draggy. Um, oh, this brush is not... Well, that's all right, I guess. Not my fave. My good brushes. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, you guys. Let me get another one. Half the time we're in the other room, at the other place, or somewhere. I don't know what's going on. I'm always, I need to, like, just sit down and sort out the brushes. Yeah, let's try this one. Again, still an angled brush. <laughs> that other one was, I was calling it ratty, like the ends were frayed. So it was giving me some weird lines. Oh, this is much better because the ends are together. I still think my yellow centers are a little too yellow. There is a little bit more darkness in those. So we'll come back and um, do a little with those as well. So I'm just going back over all the flowers I started with, adding another shade of purple to them, a lighter shade, leaving that back, that dark background to show through. Like I said, you guys, I won't I won't have you sit here for two hours with me painting. Um if you guys ever want to, let me know. We'll we'll schedule that. 
I would love to have you guys sit with me and go through a whole thing. Um, but I always think this way, at least you get an idea of how to do it. You get some of the techniques and you're able to play with it if you choose to try it yourselves. And if you want to know more, then send me a message and we'll see what I can do to help you out. Right? I don't know if you can see, I'm getting, because my background isn't dry, I'm getting paint all over. So that's why it's kind of nice if you're, if you have the time to take the time and really just do it slow and easy. But sometimes for me, it's just a matter of taking a half an hour, 45 minutes and spending the time just putting paint, putting the paint down because it's, for me, it's, it's so relaxing just to do those motions. So I hope you find that I hope you find that you get that same feeling from it and if you don't have two hours to paint then you don't need to take two hours to paint get get out your stuff and take the half hour take the 45 minutes take whatever you have and enjoy it and and you can always come back to it and touch it up later work on it another day um, that kind of thing so so there's layer two. We must try fiber on a paint video sometime. Oh my gosh, that would be so much fun, Christy. I would love to do that with you. Um, definitely. We we'll have to figure out what it is, what it is we want to do. I'm more than happy to to do a paint collaboration. That would be awesome. So I'm adding quite a bit of white to this, you guys, right now. I really want to lighten it up quite a bit more than it was. And you're seeing nothing. <laughs> Sorry. I'm adding a lot of white over here. There you go. And again, I'm going to really, where are you? Wipe my brush off. There we go. And I'm going to go right back in one more time and add just a little bit of light to these guys. Just random. Really no rhyme or reason to it. I'm going to add a few more flowers um, with this lighter color. Um, they don't all have to be any standard size. They're just random. The variations in color and texture is what's going to give you your, your shape to these. And I am just doing dashes, you guys. You can all do a dash. I'm just turning it with the direction of the flower. Some are shorter, some are longer. And where I go put in some, I'm gonna go in and put in some little bit more abstract color, um, the impression of a flower, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me, you guys, I'll tell you. Allergies this weekend, I don't know what's going on around here, but, mm. Probably the hike in the woods yesterday with my boys, my hubby and my sister. That probably didn't do me any favors. <laughs> we had a good time though. Okay, so you can see the variations in colors on the aster. That's what I love when adding light and dark to the painting to make it have depth. Yep, exactly where we're going. Adding those variations, and that's why I added the purple, the darkest one first. I'm just adding a few lights in here. These are just fillers. I'll put a little dab of yellow in them. They won't be a focus. They're just color filling in space. Yeah, I did. A, that's why I did the dark purple, and then a medium, 
and then a light. And if you find that, I mean, these are kind of going out of, they're not even real shapes. They're just impressions of something going on there. And if you feel like there's not enough depth to those, you can go back and add another shade to them. It's just, asters are so easy because they're really, they're a lot like a daisy, but much smaller. And they have a lot of different shades of purple to them as they um, age and grow. So anybody that knows September flowers are probably going to know what you're going for on this. Or if you do flowers, then you'll get it. I'm just going to go in and dab a little background shades in here. So maybe one more over here. I'll go back and dab some yellow on these ones, you guys. I'm just trying to fill in some space wherever the eye thinks it needs something. Not all of them are, you're gonna see the centers on everything because some of them are just turned in different ways. So, easy peasy. So if you saw, I just went in with some lights and some darks and just added some variations. I could actually put a ton more flowers in there than what I did, but for the sake of time, I wash this little brush off. I'm gonna take, just, I'm gonna take that yellow again so I'm going to go back into the center and take that yellow again. Oh, hi, Mary Ellen. And um, I'm going to take a touch of black and find a space on here. And just kind of muddy that yellow up a little bit there. Cut. Oops and roll my brush off. <laughs> I'm going to go back into these little yellow centers and I'm going to just draw, can you see? Yeah, you can see. Just draw some little uplines into, um, it's actually lighter than I thought it was going to be. I'm going to add a little more black to it. Into the purple in a few spots. And again, that's just given that variation of color in that center piece. I'm just going around in a circle just the same way that I did that purple. But I'm doing it really tiny in the center. And I'm not going to get too excited about it. If you get um, carried away and it goes a little further than you intended it to, just come back with your purple. Right? And um, you can go right over it. Oops. Get my brush off. And apparently I'm getting a little into the black, and that's okay, too. It's all good. Just between variations of colors, guys. Don't get too serious about it, right? Hi, Joanne. We're doing a quick one tonight. I wasn't even going to go live, but... Here we are. <laughs> you have to go back and watch the beginning. I painted a crazy dark photo today and it was just way, way dark. And I thought, you know, we need to lighten up a little bit. So now I'm just going back in with just some straight yellow and dabbing those little, little flowers that I did in the background just to give them a little dimension. So pretty good. Now I'm not a huge fan of a lot of foliage, which is what we have because they're asters. Um, when this all dries, I might go back and put another row of flowers right down here. Um, just cause it's a little bit much for me, even though it's realistic with the um, flowers. I did the witch last night. Oh, you did Mary Ellen, I wanna see it. I. I'm going to have to try to find you and make sure I'm following your page because I didn't see you do the witch. I want to see it. 
That's awesome. It's so relaxing. Isn't she fun? So even though I'm probably going to go back and do another layer of flowers on there, because I have more foliage than I like, I'm going to go right into the black, even though my, my brush is dirty here, you guys. A little water, it's dried out. I said I've been painting for hours, apparently. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it just at the bottom because I don't want to get too far into the top if I'm going to paint over them. But if you, if you are happy with where your flowers are, um, take this all the way to the top. I'm just dashing some black into my uh, foliage with that same little brush. I put a little water on it. Um, not doing every single one, just doing some random lines, right? Just to, again, give you some depth and variation to your painting. And this is so easy. I mean, you can do this with, let's see, I've got purple, which would be red and blue. Um, yellow, yellow and blue will make your green. Some white and black. So yeah, you don't need a lot of paint. I've used three brushes. I did use a, a chip brush on the background, I believe, and an angled brush and a little brush, little straight brush. So three paint brushes, your primary colors, some water, you're good to go. Easy. So if you guys, like I said, if you have half an hour or something to just lay down some paint and relax. There you go. And um, you can always come back the next night or a few nights later or whatever and, and play with it. So I will come back when this dries because I put a lot, this acrylic paint that I'm using, that yellow. Oh, I will not buy that yellow again. Um, <laughs> so when it dries, I'll come back and fix my vase. And I will add some more flowers to where that green is, but, oh, we'll do. Oh, good. Yes, Mary Ellen, you got to share your page. You got to let us know. Give us a link. Give us a something. We'll, we'll come over and check it out. I definitely want to see what you're up to. So anyways, that was my quick and easy. Well, he's watching football. And like I said, if you came on late, I'll show you the one I did earlier. So dark and crazy. That's just the, uh. This was my earlier today, way out of my comfort zone and so dark. Oh, thank you, Christy. This is not my style. I was trying to play with tones and shading and um, I don't know. It was kind of, kind of crazy. So I thought, and please you guys, this is not the finished. I just wanted to bring you along to give you the, the basic steps to get started. I do want to put more flowers in here. I do want to touch up the vase um, and do a little highlighting, but I needed something happy and cheery to do after that dark piece. So there's my art therapy. Have a happy Sunday, everybody, and thank you for joining me. And again, please feel free to share. And if you're on replay, type replay, message me any questions. And Mary Ellen, I'm going to be looking for your page. I want to see the witch. All right. Catch you guys later. Bye.